My friends, you know what time it is. Let's get right into it. Welcome to Millennials of Money. My name is Johnny and it's time for the May update of my Trade in 212 portfolio. On the whole, it's been a pretty good month. There was a couple of scares throughout the month when there was a tech sell off of US stocks and there was some worries around inflation at one point as well, which also impacted the stock market. But these impacts seem to have been temporary and not on a large scale. So the stock market on the whole has uh, generally trended upwards as economies start opening up and investor sentiment on the whole seems good. So as we usually do, let's go over to Trading212 and have a look at how my portfolio has performed in the month of May. So we'll start with the ETFs pie. So the value of the pie today is 510 euros on 495 euros invested, giving me a profit of 14 euros, which represents a gain of 3%. So this pie performing really well overall, of course, because I have global ETFs and a large percentage represented by the US um, and the developed markets around the world this portfolio is generally trending upwards. I did get a dividend this month within this ETF. So the Nikkei 225 ETF is a dividend distributing ETF and that paid me 42 cents this month. So that's a nice little bit of income there that of course will be reinvested and we'll keep doing that with the other ETFs that pay dividends as well to keep growing that pie. Now onto the Euro stocks pie, which again has had another really good month. So 320 euros, the current value of the pie on 304 euros invested which is about a 16 euro profit, which represents a gain of 5%. So really doing quite well. You remember that in the April update, which was the last update I did, that I said it was a really, really good month for receiving dividends. Well, May has been another really good month for dividends. So I received the Ahold dividend that I was expected to receive in April. So that's come through, but I also received dividends from AXA, from Buig, from Danone, and from Thales as well. And the total of those dividends is over two euros. So that's some really nice income that's come into that pie there, particularly given the overall amount invested. Remember that some of these are quarterly dividends, some of them are annual. So uh, really nice. I'm really happy with the dividends that have come in this month into the pie. There are two new additions to the pie this month. Now, if you've watched my stock analysis videos and if you've been watching my channel for a long time, you know that I quite like the telecom sector because I understand it quite well and I've previously worked in the sector. So I've added Telefonica, the Spanish telecom company, and Proximus, the Belgian telecom company, into the pie. With Proximus, you'd have seen from my previous analysis videos that it is one of the companies I've analyzed. And overall, it is pretty good, but I was a little bit on the fence. Um, and seeing that the stock price had gone down, um, I became convinced uh, that this could be a good buy, that I could be buying an undervalued stock. Remember Proximus um, is one of the prime uh, companies in the Belgian telecom operations space. So it is in a good position in the market it's in. So I decided to invest in that. And for Telefonica, you may remember quite a while back on the channel, I did analyze the stock, uh, but I wasn't fully convinced that I could invest in it at that time. Nevertheless, the company is going through a rebranding now and it is starting to give more focus to the IoT aspects of its business and the technological and digital transformation. So I really like that and I thought this would be a good time to invest in Telefonica. If you want to find out more about exactly what Telefonica is doing, I did talk about it recently on an episode of Spain Speaks, which is a weekly catch up I do with uh, Stuart, who gives updates on what's going on in the country. So I'll leave the video link up there if you want to check out that episode. The only thing I regret is the timing of this because I wanted to get in on Telefonica a bit sooner to be eligible for an exceptional dividend that they're going to pay. And because of the minimum order value of the pie, I've not been able to do that. Remember in Trading212, this minimum order value is dictated by the number of companies you have in a pie and the smallest percentage um, company that you have within that pie. So more companies you have, smaller those percentages are going to get and the greater that minimum order value is going to be so that an investment across the whole pie can take place. So this is a sign for me that this pie is nicely diversified as it is and that I probably shouldn't look to add too many more new companies to this pie because whereas not being diversified isn't great being over diversified isn't great either so we'll probably not see too many new companies added to this pie um, from now on it will probably just be focusing on the performance of these companies within the pie with that said let's have a look at the performance of the companies in the pie so first off the travel sector stocks have taken a bit of a hit 
Um, so within the UK, National Express is down. You'll remember I was up quite a lot on this stock and now only up 3%. Um, so the UK is starting to open up. Obviously the, the situation in there seems to be under control, but it now seems that there's a new variant of this illness, which is running around and is causing a bit of worry. So perhaps that's caused National Express stock to go down. Whereas people were, you know, planning to travel around the UK and maybe National Express was one of the ways they were going to do that then maybe that's now put in question as a result of the evolving situation there. People watching in the UK as well, you'll of course be aware that the government has established a traffic light system which tells you where you can travel to and from safely this summer without having to quarantine back in the UK. And a lot of countries in Europe are on the amber list. That means that you will have to quarantine on the way home. So uh, companies like Accor, uh, who have a lot of hotels around Europe and Aena, which operates the airports in Spain, obviously a major tourist destination for the UK, uh, will suffer from that if UK travelers are dis effectively dissuaded from traveling to those countries. In Spain as well, on the 1st of June, there was a new electricity tariff system imposed, which establishes peak and off-peak times for electricity consumption. And based on those hours, um, it's expected that electricity bills for most people in the country will increase. And yes, while on the whole that's generally bad, it has actually helped one of my stocks. It has helped Red Electrica de España, so the electricity infrastructure network operator, which if you remember has been one of the strugglers in the pie to, to date so far. So uh, it's a silver lining in the situation, you can call it, where one of my stocks has gone up as a result of that. And then my technology stocks are performing nicely as well so sage is up 10% you can see Thales is uh, performing nicely as well BA systems one of the stocks I bought recently when UK stocks were undervalued that's up 5% and Unilever the other stock that I bought when UK stocks were undervalued also up nicely as well so I think they were good buys and I expect these stocks to continue performing well over time as well so I'm really quite happy with the performance of this pie it does demonstrate that there are good companies in Europe that you can invest in that give you good dividends and that will provide performance and wealth creation over the long term. So really happy with this and I expect this pie to continue doing well as well. Now onto a brand new pie that I've created, the REIT pie. So REIT obviously stands for Real Estate Investment Trusts. And these are companies essentially which undertake real estate activities and they own commercial property, for example, perhaps they do renovations and essentially through their real estate activities is how they generate income. So whereas not all of us uh, have the money today to be able to invest in buying our own real estate, we can invest in real estate companies um, that are listed on the stock market and that essentially gives us a foot in the real estate space. So I set up this pie with that in mind, also because the Euro stocks pie is essentially full now, as I just said before, don't want to add too many more companies to that. And as well, um, I don't want to limit myself to REITs that are in Europe as well. Perhaps there's others that are in, in the States or elsewhere that may be of interest as well that I can add to this pie. So you'll see there's only one REIT in there for the time being, and that is Merlin Properties. So it is a Spanish REIT. Um, maybe some of you have heard of it, maybe not, but essentially uh, their real estate activities take place in Spain and they have very prominent real estate um, in the major cities, so Madrid, in Barcelona, in Valencia, in Bilbao. And when I say major real estate, I'm by no means kidding here. We're talking some of the major buildings, major landmarks, major offices in some of the big cities, shopping centers, we're talking warehouses, commercial areas in ports, and they're also undertaking a very significant development in the north of Madrid, which is expected to produce huge returns for investors as well. Shortly after I added this read to the pie, the Spanish government came out and said they want to increase the amount of taxes uh, that real estate investment trusts will pay. So probably that will have an impact on future profits of the company. But nevertheless, um, given all the prominent real estate, the prominent projects that Merlin Properties has, uh, I think this is a really good um, investment from a real estate investment trust perspective right now. They have good financials as well to back it up. So that also gave me some, some good confidence that you know over long term, can expect growth. I will admit though, I'm pretty new to investing in and analyzing real estate investment trusts. I had looked at a couple that are in the UK. I'd looked at GLC Student Living. Haven't quite made a decision on that yet. Um, but if you guys watching do have any REITs that you like in particular, or if you have any ideas, please leave a comment, let me know, and I will go check them out. By the way, I forgot to mention, I'm investing 10 euros a week currently into the Real Estate Investment Trust pie. Obviously at the moment, it's all going into Merlin Properties, but hopefully I can find some more REITs to add in 
and yeah over time that will be split over more than one route and onto the final pie so the speculative investing price 94 euros and 70 cents is the value of the pie today 45 cents down represents a very small loss DocuSign made a really nice recovery there and almost saved the day since it has um, the biggest representation in the pie. But of course, the rest of the pie is represented by Tesla and Elon Musk's Twitter fingers uh, are still doing damage <laughs> to the share valuation to this date. Um, nevertheless, still believe in the company, still think it's a good company. So we're going to keep going and I believe that one day, one day, I'll be in the green on Tesla. So yeah. So the speculative investing pie is lagging slightly behind, slowly recovering, but remember we're in this for the long term. So any short term setbacks are temporary. So another good month for the pie guys. I'm gonna be honest with you. I actually don't check in on it that much now. You know, I've built it up to a nice stage. I got my money working for me. Um, so I really, I'm, I'm very much hands off at this point. There's only very specific moments in time, such as, you know, if the stock market's down or if a particular company uh, draws my attention now that I'll probably be making changes to these pies. Don't worry though, I will still be giving you regular updates on the pie um, and showing you how it's performing. But you know, being able to sit back and, and having your portfolio work for you is, is how long-term investing should be. You shouldn't have to constantly go in and make changes to the pie. It's all about having your money work for you. And if you're constantly making changes, then you're needing to make an effort for your money to be able to work for you but all the effort should be primarily concentrated at the start and then you should maybe check in from time to time, maybe make the odd adjustment here and there, but overall make your money work for you. In any case guys, I hope you enjoyed this update. Leave a comment down below and let me know how your portfolio did in the month of May. I'd be really interested to hear. Now check out these videos if you enjoyed this one and if you're not yet subscribed and you wanna see more content like this, then make sure you hit the subscribe button with the notification bell so that you don't miss a single update. The Money Gun is back. I'll see you on the next one and let's get this money.